Hello, it's Mr. Bush here. Um, basically, today we're going to talk about uh, pure elements and compare them with uh, compounds. And then we'll look at how a compound changes its properties during a chemical reaction. So, if you look here, a pure element is going to be made of only one type of atoms. However, um, each of those atoms are going to have the same unique properties. So, every atom of an element will have its properties, like example, oxygen. Every atom of oxygen has the same exact properties as another atom. And if you get a large group of them together and it's only oxygen, well then that's going to be a pure element. So let's go ahead and look at our examples at the bottom. Now if you see the one on the left is going to be, it's not going to be a pure element because it only has, it has two different types of elements. So you can see hydrogen and oxygen present there. So that's going to be basically a compound. Now the one on the right is a pure element because it has only one type of atoms. All right, let's go ahead and move on to um, compounds. Now a compound is composed of two or more elements bonded together. And we'll emphasize the word bonded. Once they form that basically that link between the atoms, it fundamentally changes how those two elements react. So let's go ahead and look at some examples. All right, if you look at the bottom row, you can see that there's two different, or sometimes three different types of atoms linked together. Those are all going to be compounds. So, once again, you can see the bond connecting the different types of atoms, making them compounds. Let's look at the top row real quick. Now, even though there are two plus atoms on each one of those molecules, those are going to be pure elements because they're the same type of atom. So only the bottom row are going to be compounds. All right, let's try this again with another box. All right, if you look here, there's a group of basically of different atoms. Some of them are compounds and some of them are pure elements. I want you to go ahead and basically pause the video and try to identify which one of these are going to be a pure element and which one is a compound. All right, basically I circled all of the um, compounds and the ones that are remaining are going to be pure elements. Now if you look there at C2 and C3, the reason why they're not a compound is it only has one type of atoms, only one element present. All right, let's go ahead and look at the uh, properties and how they basically change during our chemical reactions. All right, so let's look at a common reaction that involves three things most of us know about. We'll start off with the two things that basically react together. You have hydrogen and oxygen. These are going to react together to make water. Now let's look at the properties of hydrogen. As y'all can see here, um, basically hydrogen is very flammable. It explodes, it makes great rocket fuel. Um, it's a very light gas, it's lighter than, um, than helium. And then you have oxygen. You can breathe oxygen. Um, it helps fires burn. It's a gas. It's very clear at room temperature. So those are the two elements that are going to make up water. Now, let's look at the properties of water. Water is not flammable. I had a few kids argue that it was, but you cannot burn water. If you're ever bored, try to light it on fire. It doesn't work. Um, it does not help fires burn. It's not explosive. It's not a gas at room temperature. You can't breathe water. So water doesn't have any of the properties of the original two elements that made it up. And we'll give you one more example. All right, everyone knows what table salt is. But we're going to go ahead and look at the two things that make it up. So the element chlorine is a dense poisonous gas. Uh, it has almost a greenish yellow tint to it. Um, was often used in like World War I. At, with mustard gas to basically it was very corrosive to skin, metal, that sort of stuff and sodium. Sodium basically is a metal that will explode and burn in water and there's a little picture of it burning and exploding over there. Now when you react them together you make table salt which you can eat 
It is not poisonous. It's not a gas. It's not even green. It does not explode in water, if you don't believe me. You can put a little bit of salt in water. It'll just sink onto the bottom and dissolve. So, basically, salt doesn't have any of the properties of the original elements that made it up. All right, let's look at our next thing, okay? All right, now the next thing we're going to look at is the difference between mixtures and compounds. The main difference is mixtures are going to keep their same properties. An example is iced tea. Basically, the tea still has, like the tea leaves still have their same flavor, the water still has all the properties of water, and the sugar still has the same flavor. The properties have not changed any. There's just two substances sharing the same space. So that's the main difference between a mixture and a, uh, what do you call it, and a compound. When a compound is formed, the properties change. So we're going to do a real quick recap, and then we're done. All right, now, once again, a pure element is going to be made up of only one type of atoms, um, whereas a compound is made of two or more different elements. So, if y'all look there, the top row is going to be um, all um, pure elements, and the um, these two right here are pure elements because they're made of one type of atom. Everything else is going to be a compound. Um, the properties of a compound will change during the reaction, and basically the they'll be completely different than the two elements that make it up, like water has very different properties than oxygen or hydrogen. Um, last but not least, a mixture is a little bit different. That's there's not going to be a chemical reaction, and because of that, everything keeps its same properties, like iced tea. Everything's in the same space, but the properties haven't changed. Um, Make sure you all have this completed and turn it in tomorrow. You have a great day.